All right, so welcome back. We're live at Build 2019. My name is Cecil Phillip, and with me I have Caesar, who's going to talk to us a little bit about ML.net. So, so Caesar, why don't we start with just telling us a little bit about who you are and what yeah. exactly do you do? Sure. Yeah, my pleasure to be here in, in this session. Um, so my name is Cesar de la Torre. Um, I work as principal program manager in the .NET team with um, almost 100% focus on ML.NET, so machine learning for .NET and .NET developers. Cool. So, so I'm very much of a machine learning novice. Uh -huh. right? I, I hear there's machine learning, there's AI. Like, are those the same things? Are those different things? Like, how does that kind of work? Yeah. So. Let's say like AI is kind of the bigger uh, subset, and you can have like uh, pre-built AI, like cognitive services, or you can have um, custom AI. So ML.NET is custom AI, so you can build your own models with ML.NET with code. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between like AI with cognitive services. ML.NET is a framework, most of all. Okay. It's just like a NuGet packages, or, uh, so you can run ML.NET on any. .NET application that you are building, either for training your model, creating your model, or when running the model for doing the predictions. OK. So again, so I'm a little bit of a novice, right? So you said model. Yeah. Like, when you say model, is that, like, is like, is that kind of like my algorithm, yeah. like a thing That's that a I train? That's a great question. Like, when we say model, it's um, uh, maybe we should say ML model or machine learning model, because okay. it's a very different thing than you know, like a data model, which sure. is just about data. So an ML model is, is uh, kind of the, all the algorithms you're going to run to make predictions. Got so it. you, it's, uh, at the end of the day, you can serialize and save a model in ML.NET in a zip file, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the, all the logic. It's kind of the, the, the magic ball, right? And then you load it, you load into your program that model, uh, ML model, and then you do predictions with got it. Got it, got it. Okay, so, so let's talk about ML.NET, right? Yep. I know ML.NET, I think this week has gone 1.0. Yep. Right. So we've we've had a little bit of a track record of iterating on this product and making it a little bit better. So so tell me exactly like why do we why do we create ML.NET and like right. what exactly is this aimed towards? And, and and also related to that, like today we are releasing ML.NET 1.0, but this is not something that we just created in the last year or last month. Mm -hmm. uh, ML.NET was internally being used by Microsoft for okay. many other product groups. Like it's been used by uh, the Azure team, Office, Windows. Uh, Power BI, many product groups in their products mm -hmm. internally, and what we are doing is to make it available as a framework to .NET developers. And in the last year, we've been working on previews to make a better API, so it was uh, better usage for .NET developers. That's that's okay. the, the what we've done. So it's even when we are releasing V1, we can say that the algorithms and everything it's is battle proof uh, on higher scale on large product groups in, in Microsoft. That's one thing. The other thing is, why would you want to use ML.NET? Because mm -hmm. there's also many other frameworks uh, and approaches for, for machine learning, right? So the first thing is that ML.NET is especially made for .NET developers. If you have .NET skills, you're a C-sharp developer, and you don't need to learn a different language, like Python or Scikit-Learn or different frameworks. It just, uh, it's very simple to get started with uh, ML.NET in C-sharp or F-sharp or even Visual Basic, and, and create those models. So that's one reason. The other reason is where are you going to run the models, right? The, yeah. the, 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 this kind of engine for the models. Yeah. Um, if you're, most of your applications are .NET, like ASP.NET in production and so forth, and you create models with a non-.NET uh, framework, like in Python, then yeah. you, you're going to have a, an issue on how to pass that into production. Right. If you do it with ML.NET, then it's straightforward. You just build a model, put it in your application, uh, run three lines of code, and boom, you're, you have it. OK, so you mentioned that I could put ML.NET in my application. I could run right. these models. Yeah. So with ML.NET, is it purely for running models, or can I train models and also consume them inside yeah. of my app with that? That's a great point, because for instance, so if you use Windows ML, mm -hmm. that's only to run models in Windows very, with a very powerful way. But ML.NET is also for creating your models. So okay. you have your custom data um, in databases or in files, data sets. And then you create your model uh, with that data. And from scratch, very specific to your industry or your business. Sure. And then you, you can do that in a console application. You train the model in there. And then once you have the, the, the model, the zip file, 
serialized, then you put it in your production application and run it for predictions. OK. So, yeah. But the fundamental thing here for ML.NET is that you create your custom models with your own data okay. and train it. So like ML for me has always been one of those things that sounds super cool. Like, this is amazing. This sounds like magic to me. But like, I, I find it hard sometimes for me to try and figure out, well, what are some good use cases for me to bring inside of my application? Like, what can right. I use it for? How is it going to help my business? Right. Like, let's say I'm in education or I'm in finance or something like that. Like, how can ML help my so, application? Because we want anyone, .NET developers that are not uh, you know, data scientists, they, sure. they are getting started. We like to start from scenarios, business scenarios, right? Yeah. instead of uh, machine learning algorithms or machine learning tasks. So for instance, in the .NET page, uh, you can see here quite a few scenarios. right? So you can create a custom sentiment analysis, like getting tweets or, or customer product reviews. And, and see what kind of the, the sentiment is about that. Or you can do product recommendations or, or price prediction for houses or for any, any other article. Yeah. Or um, you can have um, a model for doing uh, sales forecasting, um, fraud detection uh, in, in, like, uh, in credit card operations, sure. and so forth. Right? All this is not just lo like that. It's, it's, you, could, you could have like hundreds of scenarios. Sure. At the end of the day, those scenarios, you map it to machine learning tasks, which are basically uh, these ones, like binary classification, multi-class classification, regression, clustering, ranking, those kind of tasks. But we like to start from, um, from the scenarios so you can then understand what to use, right? So like all those things you said sound amazing, but I have no idea what those mean. So as a, as a .NET developer that has never played with ML before, and I don't have a background in like statistics or data analysis. Right? Like, what's the best way for me to get started? Mm -hmm. So to get started, you, you, can, get, uh, you can go to the, to the site, see different scenarios, and then you can click on the samples. So precisely, we are highlighting these scenarios. You can see here sentiment analysis, spam detection, fraud. And those are grouped by the ML task, binary classification. Mm -hmm. or Classif classifying issues or classifying type of, of, um, of flowers that would be multi-class. So you can see kind of a way to see samples and then what's going to be internally uh, done, right? Uh, but eventually, you will need to understand what are the machine learning tasks in order to map from your business problem to a machine learning task. That's why we are providing all these samples. Um, and But again, ML.NET is a framework, so yeah. it's most of all about the API. So sure. what developers will need to, to see in order to train a model, uh, I'm showing now a, a sample. It's like a console application where uh, you will train a model. Uh, so basically, you see this API. You, you are loading your data from a file. In this case, would be um, uh, I have a bunch of um, customer feedback. Uh, and then I want to get, I want to know about the sentiment analysis about that. So I load the data, um, and then I transform the data. I, I need to transform all the text to numeric vectors. Uh, I select the algorithm, in this case SDA, SDCA, and finally you can train it, right? Just call the method fit, and, and at the end you save it into a file. So this is not a lot of code, it's just a few lines, like 20 lines, but uh, there are a few challenging points here, which is, OK, how do I know what kind of uh, algorithm should I use here? Sure. Right? If you are not um, you know, specialized on machine learning, you're just a, a .NET developer, these are challenges, uh, ch challenges that you, you will get. Right? So um, that's why we are also creating, and by the way, just want to run it this demo. So basically, you created the, the, the model. Yeah. You put it in a web application. In this case, it's a web app that I'm showing here. And while I'm typing here, because it's Blazor as well in the client side, uh, it will tell you what, what's the sentiment, right? So uh, for instance, I could say, um, this is bad, and it's bad sentiment. I can say, this is awesome, and then it's a great sentiment, right? Yeah. Or whatever you want to type here. But in order to create a model, what we are doing is we, we are not just providing tutorials on how to do it and explaining all the API. 
we are also creating automation or uh, automatic generation of the models based on your data uh, and even generate the code for you. So that's a great way to get started because uh, you provide your data, not just uh, the data that we use in, in, the, in the sample. Um, and you can, you, you can do it on two ways. One way, in reality, three ways. One way would be to use the CLI uh, tool that we have. Uh, so for instance, here you can see that I just have some uh, data in, the, in this, this file. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove this folder because it's going to be what I'm going to generate later. So I have just data, uh, like uh, comments uh, about customers with feedback. So for instance, you can see that uh, this is, wow, I love this place. So this is good sentiment. Uh, or uh, this one would not, would not go back. That's bad. So uh, that's negative. And then you have all that data here. With this data, you train your model. Uh, you could do it with the code that I previously showed. But then it would be a little bit challenging for someone getting started. Uh, but just with the data, you can use the CLI. And if I type this line, you can see MLNet, auto train. The task is binary classification. I don't want to know if the comment is good or bad. Then I provide my data. And here, I provide the label column, which is what I want to predict, which is uh, true or false. And finally, how much time is going to be looking for that. In this case, just 20 seconds. In 20 seconds, it's going to be trying different combinations, different models, uh, different algorithms um, for you. And at the end, it's going to generate that code. Of course, in 20 seconds, it's going to be just um, uh, some uh, best model, but if you are working with a lot of data, uh, large data sets, then this can be maybe hours, but it'll do the work for you. But you can see you have the, the different algorithms that were, um, it, it, it was uh, trying, yeah. and then also the generated code. If I go now to the same folder, I see now this sample with a solution with the code that I'm not going to get into it now, but it's, it would be pretty similar to the sample that I was showing, but auto-generated for you yep. and targeting your own data. So, so two questions I kind of have coming off of that. Yep. Now, typically when you have like a fairly significant application, my data is in different formats. Mm -hmm. I might have something in a SQL database. I might have maybe a collection of files that are just in a folder somewhere. Or I might have some stuff in Excel or something yep. like that. Like, What do I have to do to prepare my application to be ML ready, or what do I have to do to actually get it prepared to be trained? So data to be used for training, right? Yeah, yeah that's a great question. So the most typical way is to have just files, like text files or CSV, with each column se separated from the other one with commas or, or, or tabs. That's the most typical thing. Um, but also, we support uh, reading your data from a relational database. Okay. So for instance, uh, even when most of the samples are using just data sets and files, if I go to uh, here to the samples, uh, here, you can see we also have one sample where you can train your model reading data from a database, mm -hmm. uh, which is using entity framework in this case. OK, cool. That's awesome. And then the second question I wanted to ask you, I saw you had a CLI, yeah. right? So, so where did that come from? Because that's not the .NET CLI. That's, yeah. that's something different. Yeah, so that CLI is called MLNet CLI. So okay. it's a special uh, command line tool for ML.NET for generating this code and, and, and your model. Okay. And you have all the information in docs, Microsoft.com. But basically, um, and by the way, the CLI and the tooling is in preview, ML.NET as a framework is released 1.0, okay. but the CLI is preview. Got it. But since it's tooling, it's perfectly fine for, for production as well. But you would go here, and you can see how to install the CLI. But basically, it's as, as simple as uh, running .NET tool install MLNet. So it's a okay. global tool. You, you install it with that line. It's a NuGet package that will get installed in your machine. And once you have run this, this line, then you have it here in your machine, like MLNet. Uh, help, and it's in there. OK? OK, awesome. So then pretty much like we just got to ask folks to go over to the docs, make sure they check it out, 
And then I'm guessing you're, it's open source on GitHub, so they can submit issues yeah. and give you feedback and let them know what you think about it. In, uh, in a very similar way than the CLI, we also, in preview, have created um, a Visual Studio extension, which is called Model Builder. Okay. So you could do the same thing uh, like uh, with a custom scenario. It will ask you for your data yeah. in a, from a file, like a text file. Or you can also point to a database and get the data from a table in the database and kind of a, um, a guided step by step. Uh, so from the data, train, evaluate, and then generate the code directly in your Visual Studio gotcha. project as well. Awesome. So, so ML.NET, where is this available? Like, can I, can I put this in my Xamarin app and my .NET desktop app? Can I put it in my web app? Like, is it a .NET framework? Is it .NET Core? Like, how, how exactly yeah. you know, can we consume this? So basically, ML.NET is, um, uh, is a framework, NuGet packages, and you can run it on .NET Core mm -hmm. or full or, or .NET framework, traditional .NET framework. And then we support, as of today, uh, 32 bits or 64 bits. Yeah. Okay? So that means uh, .NET Core can run on Linux, uh, Mac OS, or Windows. Or if you run it on, on .NET framework, then it would be uh, Windows. Okay. In the upcoming versions, we will support also ARM uh, as a processor. So we will support also running your model on a mobile device like Xamarin. But currently, uh, we still don't support that uh, or any other ARM-based uh, device like uh, IoT. Okay, so cool. Right now, it has to be uh, uh, x86 or x64, uh, Linux, Windows, uh, Mac, or Windows. Got it. All right, cool. So we have some questions coming in. Let's, let's, yep. uh, let's check this out really quickly from Kevin. And Kevin's asking, how challenging would it be to run OCR in ML.NET compared to using something like Azure OCR Cognitive Service? So Cognitive Service is, um, is complementary with, with ML.NET. Uh, for higher level scenarios and Cognitive uh, Service scenarios, might be challenging. But you, you also have text analysis in ML.NET. For instance, you could have a bunch of text um, coming from, I don't know, like uh, GitHub issues um, that people are submitting. And you want to classify all those issues or bugs uh, and analyze that and classify that, those bugs if they are related to networking or related to uh, data or different things. So you can train a model uh, with text as well. So text analytics and, and, and create uh, these kind of things. But cool. we, we don't provide like higher level scenarios like um, OCR, because that would be done with, with this lower level. So it's a, it's a framework. You can create those scenarios, but it's, a, it's about machine learning tasks. All right, great. Well, hey, Cesar, thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. And we hope all of you enjoyed everything you learned from Caesar today. Make sure you go to docs.microsoft.com and check out ML.net. And let us know what you can start a build with machine learning in .net. Thank you.